Hi everyone, I hope you're doing super well. Today's episode is all about Philodendron gloriosum, my favorite crawling philodendron. It's one of the easiest tropical houseplants to add to your collection. I'll share my personal care tips, plus the two tricks to get its leaves to balloon in size. But first, it's time for a repot, why I'm using two different types of containers for these gorgeous gloriosum. Well, first things first, we just need to uh, unpot this baby. And uh, I want to be very careful with its roots because, um, as I told you in past videos, philodendron gloriosum are crawling philodendron, which means that um, unlike, you know, the, your, your most of your philodendron, even like your heart leaf ones, the ones that we buy at the grocery store and stuff, they climb up trees, but philodendron gloriosum are part of crawling philodendron, which crawl along the forest floor. And so since they crawl along the forest floor, they like space to be able to crawl, obviously. Hence why they love those rectangular long pots, um, because there's just so much space for them to move around in. But I wanted to get a little fancy because I'm not a big fan of rectangular pots. <laughs> And so when I potted up these cuttings, I decided to pot them up in regular pots. Uh, and I really love the way they look. And I will keep some of my crawling philodendron, uh, like some of my glorio or not my glorios, what am I thinking here? My philodendron D. McDowell's in um, uh, those kind of pots. But I think this guy, because it's getting so massive, needs more space. So I'm going to, without trying to, disrupt the roots. I'm going to try and get this baby out of here. Let's see if I could even just a little bit try and squeeze and see if he'll come out this pot if I tap it gently ish. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah um but why don't I give you guys actually a closer look so you can see what I what I'm dealing with over here. It's right along here where you can see the new leaf is coming out. And if you were to look closer in there, you could see that uh, the aerial roots that it has on the side are, or you're trying to latch on to the side of this pot, but looks like they should be pretty easy to get out now, now that I've kind of unhinged them a little bit. They're unhinged. I mean, aren't we all in a kind of sense? <laughs> and uh, boy, I, I wasn't. And I don't want to like crack open this pot like I do sometimes with other plants. Like if I am having a tough time getting them out uh, because I really want to reuse this pot. It's a nice pot and I've had it for so long. Um, but here's the thing, okay? Uh, I've noticed in my experience, and I'm curious if you guys have too, that my philodendron gloriosum, they grow really, really um, big roots, like really thick roots and really long roots pretty quickly. And so, whoop, guy is caught there. He must have tied it up. Poor thing. Let me free you. Um, they grow some crazy roots, like, pretty quickly. And so I, uh, I want to be cognizant of not trying to disrupt its roots, but I know that it's running out of space. Uh, I can feel its roots, like, uh, latched onto the sides of this entire pot. And I'm trying to gently unpeel them oh man this is definitely gonna have a ton of roots oh i think you got it okay yeah this thing has grown roots like nobody's business oh boy this is uh, apparently i'm assuming how doctors help um with childbirth <laughs> wow, wow yep sure enough thing grew some crazy roots and to think that it really didn't have a ton of roots when it was initially in there. And you can see uh, what I'm talking about here um, with how this was running out of space. So it was butting up against the side of that wall. And look at those aerial roots, that, uh, those side roots that were starting to grow. So, yeah, it's definitely, that's too large of a pot. So what we're going to do is we're just going to break this soil up a little bit. And I think what I'm going to try to do is try to put it in that pot with the other cutting, which is weird because they both came from the same mother plant, so technically they're like brothers or sisters. 
and they will be reunited once again and hopefully happy, or they will destroy each other inside of their uh, new pot together. <laughs> Okay, so roots are cleaned, and upon further review, and after looking at the roots um, and how massive they are, I mean, just look at that. That's insanity right there, my friends. Um, I've decided this is actually probably a really good size pot for, for this plant because um, it'll have plenty of space to crawl around in there, um, at least until the end of the summer when it gets too big again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in some new soil, with some of its current soil so it'll be like it's home still and once i get that taken care of we will pot her up um i'm curious also if you folks have crawling philodendron um what do you pot them up and do you use the rectangular pots like you're supposed to or do you go with uh your standard pots or kind of switch it up leave it in the comments below because i'm always curious to know like what other people um, do. So, let's see here. Give it a little twirl, mix it around. Oh, those are such beautiful roots. What lovely roots indeed, plant. Good job. Okay. So, oh, I need my rooting hormone powder, which is over here. I can't believe my place is such a mess right now. This is just because I'm doing some plant rearrangement and all that good stuff because the summer sun, spring sun, is starting to come in really <laughs> bright into my western facing windows. And I need to shift a lot of these plants around. So let's see if we do it this way. Yeah. And that's how it's done. Okay. So I'm just going to put some more on there. And then, so mix in. I'll probably have to use the rest of this potting medium soil mix as I run out because uh, this plant's going to take up a lot clearly <laughs> um, but again with this crawling philodendron like other crawling philodendron we want to make sure we don't cover up that rhizome um, where the new leaf is going to come out this is the rhizome right here so let's see take that throw in some over here some down there do a little area, cover up its roots, like so. I have to say, out of all the crawling philodendron, um, the Gloriosum is hands down my favorite. And it has been uh, ever since I got one because it's just such a lovely, easy to care for tropical plant. And those leaves of it are just so um, velvety and beautiful. I can't get enough of them. And uh, looking forward to watching this plant grow some more big balloon like leaves as it has done <laughs> all throughout the winter months which is kind of crazy because usually that's when they're like hey we're taking a little break here it's winter um not this plant <laughs> this plant just kept on growing and growing and growing and uh it kept on growing these big balloon like leaves because i really ramped up the humidity for it and gave it really ample humidity, which they do love. They don't need crazy humidity, but if you'll give it to them, they'll be happy plants. And uh, that's what we want, is for our plants to be happy. And so, yep, just as expected, ended up using all the rest of the potting medium, um, which is a chunky aeroid soil mix, as is tradition. Okay, so let me just try to push this down so it has some stability and doesn't get all wonky on us or sideways and crooked. Cool! I'm liking it. I picked up this pot. It was really cheap. I picked it up at um, Target. <laughs> it was like $16 for a big pot like this. I know it's meant for like outdoor plants, but whatever. This will be fine. This uh, soil mix is um, just perfect because it's chunky, it's airy, and even though this is a plastic pot, it will certainly uh, drain out really nicely. So there we go. Look at that, you guys. Once again, with your help, with your help, my friends, we did it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to water it and let it dry out and then put it back in its place.